What's going on guys, whether you just bought an a7 IV or considering buying an a7 IV, I just want to preface this entire video by saying this, the a7 IV is an awesome hybrid camera, I mean truly spectacular, but, but you have to change a couple of settings. So this whole video serves as a purpose not to show you what basic settings to change like going from auto exposure to manual exposure and setting your custom buttons or whatever. That's not what this video is about. These are the top five settings you should change in order to get the most functionality out of this camera and truly turn it into a hybrid camera. The first setting, the most crucial setting and the setting that I'm just absolutely stunned that Sony wouldn't turn this on by default is the different settings for still slash movies. And I use this camera for two to three months just using the memory recall. And let me tell you, that is not the most efficient way to do this. The most efficient way is to have this setting turned on so all you have to do is flip the top switch in order to go from photos to videos really quick with completely different independent settings. So let's hop into it and change the setting real fast. First, you wanna hit your menu button and go all the way down to the briefcase. Once you get to the briefcase, take a right and go to operation customize, which is the third option. Then you're gonna go take a right and go all the way down to different settings for still slash movie. Now it'll give you this prompt telling you that these settings are completely independent of each other depending on what you have your top switch set as for photo or video. For me, I have it set on video right now, but for right now it really doesn't matter. So you're gonna press okay and then here you have all your different settings that you can have independent from each other when you're switching back and forth. So for aperture, I like to keep that the same because usually I want the same depth of field no matter whether I'm shooting photos or videos. Next, I have the shutter speed. So if you know anything about video, you double your frame rate with your shutter speed. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you're shooting at one over 50th shutter speed. Anyways, I don't want that when I'm taking photos because one over 50th shutter speed would make a pretty blurry photo. So I turn that on to be independent. Next, I turn on ISO because on the picture profile eight, which is S-Log3, it's set to standard ISO of 800. That is the base ISO that you can record at. Well, I don't want all of my photos to be taken at ISO 800, so I turn that on as well. Exposure compensation, I don't really use this. Metering mode, I don't really use this. White balance, of course, if I'm shooting in the same scene at the same time and switching back and forth, I want that to be um, standard switching back and forth picture profile. Now this is huge because now with the flip of a switch, you can go from S-Log3 with even Gamma Assist turned on to just the regular standard picture profile all with the switch. So that's why I had that turned on. Focus mode, you can change this. Normally I'm just set to auto focus on face priority. So I just leave this blank and okay. So let's hop into photo mode and change a couple of settings just so I can show you what this actually did. So we'll go shutter speed one over 1000. We'll keep the aperture at 1.4 and ISO, let's just crank it to 2500. Sure, why not? And the picture profile, as you can see, is off. And then I just have these autofocus settings on, whatever, it doesn't matter. But now whenever I change it to video mode, watch how it changes the setting almost instantly so where you're ready to shoot video with a click of a button. So we flip the switch and boom, everything is completely changed to video mode. So now you can see 4K24, you can see our shutter speed changed to one over 50. Our ISO is at 800, which is the base ISO for picture profile eight, which is S-Log3. And then it even turned on gamma assist, which is pretty nuts and phenomenal. The next setting you should change, which is completely new in the a7 IV, is being able to assign what the exposure compensation wheel does. For me personally, I love having this set to white balance so I can easily scroll through the color temperature values. To get to the setting, of course, you wanna hit the menu button and then go down to the briefcase again. And then instead of operation customize, we wanna to go to dial customize. From there, we take a right and then go to either one, photography or video. For me personally, I have this wheel set to be both photography and video. I hit photography, go all the way down to the wheel, and then number three is that different customizable top wheel. So I have mine set to color temperature, but you can change this to anything. Your shutter speed, your, your ISO, your aperture, it just all depends on what you want for your workflow. The third setting, which is also new in the Sony a7 IV, is focus breathing compensation. And this is an absolutely cool feature only if you have a compatible Sony lens. 
What is focused breathing? Well, focused breathing is when you rack focus, either autofocus or manual focus, and the lens actually zooms in or out a little bit, depending on where you're pulling that focus plane. And this is very evident on not cinema lenses, basically. So in order to do this, in order to change this, you're gonna dive into the menu setting and go to image quality, and then you're gonna take a right again and go all the way down to lens compensation. From there, you're gonna go to breathing compensation and you're gonna turn that on. So what this setting is doing is actually cropping in on your sensor just a little bit in order to get rid of those zoom ins and zoom outs when you're pulling your focus. The fourth setting you should change, which was introduced in the FX3, but not the A7S III, Sony, please update your firmware. Please, it is so out of date now with all of your new camera releases. Is to assign a button to record frame rate. For me personally, I like to have it at C3 so I can easily change my frame rate to 60. Then I just bump the shutter speed to one over 25 and all of my settings are still the same. So I don't have to worry about memory recall, changing any settings like white balance. And so now instantly I can go from 24 to 60 change my shutter speed and I'm ready to keep rolling. The fifth and final setting you should change is emphasize record display. What does this do? Whenever you're recording, it makes a red box around the display of the camera. And that's probably a little hard to see. So whenever you're looking off kind of in a distance maybe or a little bit, or if you're just paranoid like me and always worrying if you're recording or not, now that just gives you a clear sign that you in fact are recording and you're not gonna stress about it the whole time. You're gonna try not to stress about it the whole time. To get to the setting, of course, you have to hit the menu button. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down to number 11, which is shooting display. You're gonna take a right and then hit emphasized record display. And this is very preference based, but for me, it gives me a big peace of mind knowing that I have seen the red square and I know that I'm recording. Instead of having to look down and see standby or record, that, that is just absolutely small for me. I just like seeing the big red box. And with all of that being said, those are my top five settings to change when first getting the a7 IV. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. And if you wanna see more, hit that big red subscribe button. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.